A uh, fellow Kansas City native and Chiefs fan, it was fun to be able to talk with offensive line coach Eric Mateos after BYU football practice uh, last night. Of course, we talked about the offensive line, but our interview also just happened to coincide with the start of the Chiefs game. Here's my conversation with Eric Mateos on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. All right, Coach, now we're both Chiefs fans. We're both originally from Kansas City, and, and right now the Chiefs game is actually going on. Uh, mm -hmm. This may be one of the quickest interviews in the history of quick interviews, so we can get back and actually watch this game. And and you actually have it on your phone right now, right? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It uh, appears to be third down. I don't have my contacts in, so I'm not exactly sure. But, yeah, and that's why – that's the sole reason I have the biggest iPhone they sell, so I can do things like this. It's it's basically just so that we can have another uh, a, a TV in our pocket. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Now, but before we get into the stuff, you know, like the football BYU stuff, Chiefs, obviously coming off a Super Bowl championship. I've got my uh, my Super Bowl champion T-shirt on right now. Uh, are we going to repeat? Are we running it back, as the Chiefs like to say? You think? I think I think we uh, I think we are. I mean, I think we didn't lose any we didn't lose any offensive weapons. I really like the development of the uh, the second and third tight ends we have on the roster. I think the O line is improved. I think we'll we'll miss the right guard uh, early, but I think after a while, I think they'll get in sync more on the O line. And uh, I like where the defense is at. I like where their mindset is. And so I think I think we're going to run it back. All right. I like your I like your optimism. Once we're done with the interview, we'll get back and actually watch the game tonight. <laughs> but let's let's focus on the stuff that people are actually tuning in to hear us discuss. And that's some BYU football and man alive. What a performance on Monday in Annapolis for BYU 55 to three. Just a, a throttling of the midshipmen after a few days now to look at the tape. How pleased were you with the play of the offensive line? I, I, I know that you, you don't want to give too much credit and let their heads get too big, but that was a dominating performance up front. Yeah, um, I'm pretty frustrated with uh, a couple of red zone drives we had there. Um, you know, one, I think our third or fourth possession, not, not finishing with a touchdown and running it in. Uh, that bothered me quite a bit. I was really irritated with uh, the two-minute drill. We didn't get the third down on third and two. So there's still a couple things that we went into this offseason really focusing on that I think we still have a lot to a lot of work to do. I mean, I mean we made a big point of emphasis if we want to improve in the red zone, we have to improve running the ball in the red zone. And so I think we did that to an extent, but I think we still missed uh, missed some opportunities there, running it in in the red zone, um, and then uh, in the two minute drill that the third and the third and two we ran a zone uh, to the right side and and we got tackled um, uh, and we had to go for a quarterback sneak on fourth and one just to to keep the drive going. So those are two things that I think we got to get taken care of. And then uh, Zach got hit uh, or uh, Baylor got hit once um, on a screen in the second half. And that bothered me too. So uh, we got to get those things cleaned up. But if we if we attack those, then we'll get better. Well, spoken like a true coach. Certainly, you want this team to get better regardless of the outcome. But uh, but I'm curious when you, when you look at the big picture, so much preparation is involved in getting these guys ready. You know better than anybody the talent that is there on the offensive line. So knowing what's there from a talent perspective, coaching these guys up. How satisfying is it, though, for you to see these guys come out and execute at such a high level? I mean, that's why you coach is because you want to see your players have success. Um, I really find nothing more satisfying in coaching than seeing my players go play in the NFL or seeing my players smiling after a win. And that's what motivates me as a coach. So uh, I spend my time working so they can have those feelings and so it's very satisfying. It's, I, I, nothing makes me happier than seeing them happy after a win and seeing them proud of their work. And, but also, it's, it's my job to also bring them down to earth. Um, uh, you know, it, we only had, in my, with my grading, we only had one player grade out with an A for the game. And we only had three players grade out with a winning grade over 85%. So, um, with my grading system, we're still not five guys grading out over 85, and until we do that, we're not uh, we're not anywhere close where we need to be to be to reach our goals. Who was the one guy that graded out as an A in your estimation? Uh, Clark Clark graded out 90 percent uh, with six knockdowns and one great effort block. So, how much of what we saw 
on Monday against Navy. And I'm not just talking about just from the offensive line, from what the running backs did, and boy, were they impressive, Zach and Romney coming in, the receivers. How much of that do you think is sustainable moving forward? It better be sustainable. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's offensive football. Offensive football is execution. And you have a style of play, and then you have schemes that you use that fit your style of play. And um, our, our, our style will not change. Uh, throughout the course of the season, we might r have some wrinkles in our schemes, but uh, the style in which we play, you should expect to see that every game. And that's my expectation. And that should be the expectation of all that support us. It has been a pretty big week for you in general. You get the big win on the big stage Monday night, and then you get engaged this week. First and foremost, mm -hmm. congratulations. But Thank here's you. the question I want to ask you, Eric. What was the bigger victory? Getting her to say yes or the win over Navy? Uh, definitely, definitely uh, Jillian saying yes was the much bigger victory for me. Um, and I'm not just saying that either. Uh, she's, she's an amazing woman. I'm very lucky to have her in my life. And it was a huge uh, moment for me in my life and my personal life. And I'm very grateful for her and her family. And I'm looking forward to the future. And because and, I'm going to have, uh, I tell people all the time, you're going to have a lot of game days. You're going to have a lot of logos you wear on your shirt throughout your career. But uh, she's going to be my ride or die. And, and uh I'm really happy about that. Are we allowed to know how you proposed, uh, or is that something that's a little too personal to share with BYU Sports Nation? I uh, just took her to a bad Mexican restaurant. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Look at you, you big softy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, there's some other stuff in there, but uh, we'll just keep it between us. All right, that's understandable. Well, well I, I know I speak for everyone when I say congratulations. Um, so right now, Army would be the next opponent, obviously not this weekend. They've played one game. By the time you face them, they'll, they will have played uh, two games. What have you seen from the Black Knights when you look at the tape early on this season? Disciplined. Um, they keep it relatively simple so their players can play very fast, uh, very physical team. They play well with their hands. Uh, extremely energetic. They swarm to the football. You notice those kind of things on film. Um, I would say one thing that I've just noticed in the last 48 hours is, is they, they play together and they look like they're having a lot of fun playing football. And you can tell how much they appreciated the opportunity to play their game similar to how we appreciated it. And uh, they were, they, they played extremely hard in their previous contests and, and we are very excited to play them because we know that we're going to have to bring our best shot if we're going to win the game. Well, and I, I think that this angle has been brought up more on the defensive side, going up against the option and having the extra time to prepare. But what type of advantage do you think it is to have an extra week to prepare for an opponent this early in the year? I, I was saying this even with our Navy game. Uh, even with all the preparation for Navy, I did not feel like we were prepared until we got on that plane, until I was grading the test that night on Sunday night. You know, once I graded the test, then I said, okay, we're prepared. So as a coach, I don't think you ever feel, you know, prepared until the foot hits the ball, to be honest with you. So no matter how much time you have on a team, you just always feel like there's more and more work to do and more to accomplish. So I've never really been able to take a breath, even with a bye week. I still feel a sense of urgency to get started. And, and uh, sometimes the challenge tends to be don't get too much on the call sheet or don't install too much offense just because you have extra time. Uh, let's not get too crazy or too creative. Let's, 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 let's may have a balance there where we want to take advantage of the extra time, but we don't want to overload our players just because we have a few extra days and all of a sudden there's an oversaturation point. And so we want to avoid that as well. So it's not where, Oh, we have extra days. So let's put in 30 extra plays. It's you don't want to do that either. So there's a balance there. All right, coach, we'll wrap it up. Uh, we'll let you and myself get to the Chiefs game. I, I don't know what the score is. You're looking over there. Uh, blink blink yeah. once if we're ahead, blink twice if we're behind. It, it's this odd. I think it's good I don't have my contacts in. That's all I'll okay. say. <laughs> all right. <laughs> coach, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Congratulations on the win. Congratulations again on getting engaged. That's awesome. Uh, and, uh, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Thank you very much. That was Eric Mateos, offensive line coach on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. You know why. 
we show how I think it was what seven nothing Houston perhaps at that point. Uh, yeah, that it would have been seven nothing Houston yeah. at that point. And yeah. then it was like thirty. Then it was thirty one unanswered. Thirty one unanswered. Mm-hmm. So it went really well. It.